Okay, it's actually Sunday. Why am I on a Sunday, you may ask? Because I forgot to pack my tools up for a garage I work for on Monday. So, quick one, update. Front suspension, no more leaks. Can you see that? The floor is dry. I fitted some new vent hoses to the shock absorbers there. I used a bit of a brake pipe on them both to jam into the suspension, which then drains back off. And same on this side, both the pipes were loose and missing, so we fixed them, repaired them best we can. So we've got two, the front end is now got no leaks whatsoever, which I am absolutely thrilled about. As for the back, oh, bit of a different story. We are absolutely dripping out the back. Can you see it there? But it's actually running down the pipe here. It's running down the pipe. Well, not pipe, but this, whatever this cable is here. I don't even know what that is. Does anyone know what that is? Let's go to 0.5 mode. What the hell is that? It goes to... I don't know what it is, but above there is leaking. Um, if we go to this side, you can see the pipe I replaced. In there. Oh, the torch has run out. So in there, you can see the pipe I replaced. But then if you look down there... This section down here, there's another pipe. And I believe it's another pipe causing it. So that's next week's delight is I need to try and figure out what pipe's leaking, try and gain access to the bugger and then fix it. As for that, the rear end looks good. Pads are like new, discs are battered, but they'll clean up nicely after a bit of breaking. <sighs> coolant leak. I didn't fix my coolant leak. I thought I'd fix my coolant leak. All I've done is make it slightly better. So the coolant leak still needs to be rectified. Um, it'll be all right. I'll just take that pipe back off and figure out where it's coming from. But yeah, as for now, she's actually pretty tidy. I know it looks rough under here, but it's actually not. A lot of it's just debris and bits of oil which have been sat for a long time. So it just needs a good brush, clean up this CV boot. I've noticed is in very poor condition. Very, very bad. This ball joint, also very bad. Hmm. So whether do I just buy a new shaft for this side? A whole new shaft and just put a new shaft on it? Or do I repair what's there? The shafts are cheap. You get them on eBay for about 60 quid for a whole new shaft. But does the other side need doing? No, so it needs one drive shaft and one ball joint. Yeah, one drive shaft, one ball joint. And then the special tool ordering for the ball joint. So that's another thing I needed to buy, the special tool for the ball joint. Hopefully no one's been at it before. Nope, I don't think so. But yeah, it's not great either, so that needs fixing. Bugger, 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 bugger. I might just take it for MLT and get the fail sheet and then I can push very hard then. But well, yeah, that back leak needs fixing ASAP. Who wants to find, find out what I found? Yay! So, found the pipes, which which I've been struggling with. Um, oh, it's so difficult to see, it's absolutely buried. So back there, you've got one. There's two there, the one with the green fluid, and there's one there. So, you've got a pipe from that one, a Y piece, into two short pipes, which go into there, I think. So here is the sucker. So if I investigate correctly, that's how it should go, like that. So if I can just snip this, utilize this for there, make them a bit longer, give me a bit more wiggle room. I've got this much pipe left, so I, I, I plumbed it up wrong at the back because I don't know what I'm going off, but now I know. Someone told me on the forum that there's a Y piece and that just completely changed my perspective on the whole thing, so. Once I've, I'm going to try and put this in now before the day's work starts. And if I can get this in now, then I can just fucking tick off suspension leaks. So I'm super excited. So let's get this cut and made. Cut it a bit longer, give myself a bit more wiggle room, and then away we go. Holy moly. So there's my new Y piece. Now this is going to be very tricky. Oh, it's a bit of a bugger to see, isn't it? So I'm going to have to do this blind. So that's where the long pipe goes into, is that sucker there that one and then it breaks off into them two there basically can you see i can see 
let's see how long this is going to take. I'm going to try and get the two little pipes in first. And I can jam in the big pipe after that's like pretty, pretty, the way I think it's going to happen. So, <sighs> wish me luck. Wow. At least if I can't do it now, I'm going to spend another 10 minutes on it. I need to whiz the wheels on this car and get this thing out of here. It's ready for the day's work. Oh my God. She's in. Look. There's my life piece. She's in. Oh, mate, that was horrendous. That was horrendous, but she's in. I'm going to wipe that up, put my wheels on, drive it out, and see if it leaks today, which it shouldn't do now. Buzz in. I don't think you understand how happy I am with that. I'm so fucking happy with that. That was bad. That was a bad job. Very bad job. I needed midget hands. Little baby hands to get in there, but done. Well, I'm fluid now. Because we are now no longer leaking. I can fill this sucker up. Um, this is your level gauge there. Still don't know 100% how to use it, so um, I'm just going to fill it up for the time being. I'll get my Haynes manual out later and have a good old look. But yeah, let's get some fluid in there. Bit awkward to pour in, to be fair, but it'll be alright. I'll be airbox off because I'm going to try and simplify it. Every single pipe, bro. Just I'm not even connected. That heat pipe for the warm phase isn't connected. There's no pipe at the front. There's also. This is all broken here. So the idea is to get rid of that, um, put some breathers on the oil cap here, and just put a filter straight onto that to just eliminate <coughs> more failure points. So that's what I'm currently up to. So I'm gonna measure up the oil cap here with a micrometer. So if I get this. Want it to pass through kind of easy like that. So let's just call that one sec, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's just call that a 10 mil um, ID on that side. And this side will be a lot more. So 10 mil ID on that side. And I'm going to hazard a guess at 20, that's 21, so let's go for that. Oh. So 10 mil and 21 mil, so let's go on eBay and order some crankcase breathers for that. And then this oil cap can go back on. This also had a huge crack in it where it was opening, so I put a zip tie around and now the seal is actually sealing again which is good yeah so just decided to smoke test it you can see the pinhole right there he's missed a bit all burnt a hole through it and it's created another leak so i'm gonna to take this back and get that redone i think bollocks damn motherfucker See that? That's the leak. Right there. I'm just wondering if Euro emission standards even existed back here. Um, see this little bit here for warming up the car? I'm going to undo these two. Take that off. Get that gone. Basically, I'm de emissioning this vehicle. Like I said, I put a blank on there for the time being. I'm going to get a filter for here, which goes around there nicely. I'll get the Ram Air conversion kit here. And then the bay is a lot more simple. It'll look like this, essentially. There's a lot more thinking room. Because of the more simple this is, the better for me, because I'm not very familiar on these older vehicles. So, yeah, that's the plan. That is the plan.
currently just waiting for a customer to collect Audi TT. Once that's collected, I'm straight in my van and I'm off to the place who welded my pipe last time. That's some innuendo there for someone, isn't it? Um, so once I've gone there, got that fixed, I've got another customer arriving at two and then another car arriving. So, and then another one later. So I've got an A5, I've got an A4 and then a BMW is coming later on. So don't know, I'm going to try and get that coolant pipe fixed um, today. Get that fixed and get it back on, painted it, paint it and get it back on. Check for leaking, get the exhaust red hot and then that emissions heat up preface thing, which is on the top of the manifold. I'm going to try and unbottle that whilst it's hot. Give me a fighting chance. Too. It's very rusty. And then that's a few jobs ticked off. Not great. I'm, I'm busy. Well, busy's good, isn't it? Busy's very good. Uh, but yeah, I might actually do a spend a couple hours later on once that BMW is picked, dropped off later. I might spend a couple hours. I've got spark plugs and stuff like that. So I might put some spark plugs on it for what it's worth and then call it quits. And at least I've made some sort of progress. There's still a suspension leak. Tiny one. Tiny, tiny one from the rear end. So. I might actually put the BX in the air tonight, check that leak, see if it's something stupid, which I've just done whilst doing the Y piece and try and finish that. I feel like I'm doing a lot, but not achieving loads. I'm just doing a lot of bits and bobs, but I suppose that's just classic car stuff, isn't it? So, um, just got to keep chipping away. Keep chipping away because it's just a load of little bits and loads of little bits add on to an overwhelming amount of work um, and I feel like I'm not making as much progress as I wanted I wanted it MLT this week not a chance not a chance still need to do a CV boot and a ball joint um, perished so I don't know whether to just get the MLT on it just to hit some form of milestone because um, I think they might pass they're not great but they might pass don't know and I kind of want to see what other things you pick up as well, because I can only I can only see so much. You know, it's good to have a second pair of eyes. But yeah, that's where I'm at, waiting. At least the sun's shining. Just need to get its coolant pipe done. Once the coolant pipe's done, I can actually run it up to temp. I can run it up to temp. See if it gets hot. See if the fans work. I'm not. I don't even know if the fans work yet. I'm not taking it for MLT without the fans working. That's just that's just stupid. I've never had it up to temp, so that needs to be done as well desperately round number two turn the radio off we get copyrighted i've learned that the hard way but look one we've got it all the way around now no messing so now well my rubber o-ring set on fire and um disintegrated so put a new rubber o-ring we'll give that a lick of paint put a new rubber o-ring on put it back on done i'm really chuffed now that looks if that leaks now i'm basically there's a guy there's a guy in holland who's got uh, put my seatbelt on one hand. There's a guy in Holland who has two pipes, two of them buggers. So my plan is to actually buy one. I do actually want to buy a new one, just because why not? I'm going to buy a new one. I'm going to get it powder coated, sandblasted powder coated, because I think it's just English weather plus the fact that it's had rusty water in it for so long. It's not a good thing. But yeah, that's the plan. She's done for now. Oh, trying to get the suspension up because I was showing someone before. Throttles used to have a sticky throttle, but whoa! Now, now I'm using it a bit. It's eased off. Okay, back up. Let's lock the suspension. Uh, locked. Okay, let's get a torch. She's actually idling now, which she never really did. She keeps doing this, so can you see? 
Let's see what's happening in there. So, so that's doing its thing now. That's open. Looks like it's not idling high enough. Like it's trying to stall. And then you've got to give it a bit of... Hey, it's good news though. Oh. She keeps idling a bit low. Good. This is no good. Still. New toy. <laughs> Fibre towels. Um, look at these. They come in a roll and he just ripped me loads off. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some. I was gonna go over the, the car with a bit of um, detailing spray. Let's give it a wipe. The paint's obviously not a show winner. I've already hot washed it. I've already done X, Y, and Z. I'm just gonna get the rest of the shit off the paint. Just give it a quick wipe down. I know this is not the way detailers look away because you're going to hate me for this, but I don't really care. I just want to clean it up a little bit more because it's it's not clean enough. So I'm going to clean it up, a little bit of a clean, probably polish it eventually as well. But yeah, good. Look at how shiny, it, like basically, I just took the top layer of shit off. When it gets snow formed and real contact wash, if you see stuff like this here, see all that shit there. I should be using another microtire. It's not too dirty, the car, but if you see all these old grease marks here, everything's coming off. See, I know it's probably not great um, washing it this way, but, um, the, the less I'm aggressive with it, and the more soft I am with it, the less damage I'm going to be doing. So the idea behind doing this now was to just not be too aggressive with it. Just like this, if I just lightly, the paintwork's short as it is, so. But if I can lightly just go over it all, and just gently just give it a bit of something. And also that, I know it's a bit of a cheap spray wax, it just gives it a bit of protection. So as you can see there, it's not that dirty, is it really? It's just got all this, it, it needs a good clay bar really, but I don't really like clay bar in cars, especially if you're not machine polishing them because they come out really shit. If you know, you know. I've done it to a few cars in the past and then gone, why the fuck have I done that? I've made it look all right, mess. Um, so for now, this will suffice until I can actually take it home, snow foam it, etc. But it just gives you a good idea, I always think, if you wash your car, you know, spend a bit of time touching it. Not in that way, you creeps. Um, you can really get an idea as to the condition of it. And overall, it's, it is what it is, this car. It is what it is. It's not perfect by any stretch, but it's not a dog, really. It's not a dog at all. Um, this is bad. Sides, okay, this side's good. Look at the shine on it, it's actually pretty good. Rust here, dent here. Back bumper, shit. Tail light, broken, damaged. Whole corner, damaged. This whole section, damaged. Rubber strip, missing, with bad rust. 
She's not a looker. Uh, it never is going to be. It's not a straight. It's not a clean car by any stretch of the imagination. But it works. And that's all I really care about. I don't care about how it looks. I just want to get out in the bugger because it's the coolest thing on planet Earth. So right now, what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to do the spark plugs now. Do the spark plugs. Oh God, can't do it one-handed. I fancy doing the spark plugs, so I'm going to do those. See how it's running. Again, I'm not going to do an oil change yet. Can't be bothered. I don't think it's the time to do an oil change yet. I need to get the thing running a bit better first. Oh, Jesus Christ, they were tight. See, I'm going to mark these up and then go from there. Holy shit. No. Who would do this to me? What? Why is that one loose? Fuck that. I'm going to have to get the car hot and do them. <sighs> I'll get the car hot and do them. That is... That is just not worth it. Oh dear, right. Oh dear. That is not good. One sec, let me get some oil. Let's hope the penetrating oil does the penetratings. Let's just forget about those for a while. That's that's ridiculous. Ugh. What the hell is that? Use your brain. Number three. Number two. Number three. And number four. Alright, let's forget I even tried that. Let's make sure it starts still. Because that would not be fun. But I'm actually still happy after hearing them noises. Remember when I said I wanted this MLT this week? I can't even do a set of spark plugs. There's a horrendous knock from the front as well. I know it needs a ball joint on this side, but there's actually not excessive play in it. So I'm like, where the hell's a knock coming from? This car, man, it's so pain. Exactly, created another. So I'm bodging-ish. Brake pipe into there with a couple, I think is gonna be the way. So obviously as I've done that, it's found the next weakest point, which is that, which ain't ideal, but yeah. Brake pipe seems to work. When you so that's the plan. I have to snip this about here, shove some pipe on and go from there. But yeah, that goes on and then shoves in. So that'll be okay. So what I've just done is, because I need to do my steering rack boots before the MLT, both sides are bad. Um, I was watching Up and Down, um, the YouTube channel Up and Down. I love that guy. That guy is awesome. And literally, as he's as I'm following on from the the videos, what he did on the tomato, 
we're literally doing very similar things apart from he's doing a bit more goodness. I'm not doing the job as well as he is, but I'm just kind of getting the car together. So I'm currently watching the one where he does the steering wheel boots and he says, this is a shit job in, on the car. And I'm like, oh, bollocks, I'm doing it on the car. I'm not taking the rack out because I don't want to drop the LHM fluid, etc. So what I've done is just before, because I've, I've only got an hour before my next job's in at the shop. So I'm working in between work here. I've got it on the ramp. Luckily, unfortunately, it can't stay on the ramp. So I've undone this. I've undone that. So they are both on seas. So when the time comes, I can move the ram out of the way and do this boot. This boot's the easy one. So I'm going to make sure all these come undone. If these come undone, it can be it can be um, attacked. So what I've done here is, God, this is impossible with one hand. Holy shit. One second. Right, so what I've done here is slacken them off. I know they're going to come off now. Because all I'm doing today, remember, is preparing for the next job because I've got one ramp. It's annoying. I want two ramps and then the BX can live on the ramp and then I can just fix it. So what the plan is now is these are done. They work. The next plan, I don't know, tomorrow I've got a dormer to fit on a micro, service my own personal van, and then I'm potentially going to get on with doing these boots. And on the video, on the up and down video, God, I need to tidy up. Um, on the up and down video, he said something about <clears throat> getting the boots over the trackwood end. Because look at what you adjust the buggers. They look like a right shit job <clears throat> to even adjust those. There's not really any good angle to, to get on those, and the tracking's extremely good on this car. So I'm gonna I'm gonna have to try and see if I can stretch the the buggers over, ideally. But they look like original boots to me because they've still got these old school clips on, you know, super old school clips. So they need to come off somehow. Probably a big pry bar. Yeah. <sighs> Getting somewhere. But it's been about three hours, and I've not had one string single drip off this bodge. <clears throat> which is only temporary by the way do not kill me but yeah it's only that's it so i think that's all my leaks done but yeah that's the plan the next plan is that so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna take the boot boots out of the bag which i bought and see if they stretch you if they stretch you it'll go over the track rod if they're not stretchy then i don't know what to do really those are not good that's not gonna stretch is it so this side will get over the track rod end, but that side won't. <sighs> Rest in peace, Zach. It's boys and girls. But can you see that there? She's come loose. Easy peasy, baby. Look at that. Love it, love it, love it, love it. That's easy. That means that's going to be easy now. Because for this side, a bit of a cross. <sighs> Let's choose my weapon of choice. Probably gonna be this. <laughs> With this. With this. And this will equal this. And Skadoosh, let me do it. Mm -hmm. For the job has made. Oh, no, I'm so oh my god, my hands are so far. Oh no, it came up to me. But trust me when I tell you that. God, ignore that. Let's cover that. I'm sorry. Let's cover that. Okay. Just, um, just let me. Just let me tell you. She's undone, boys. She's only undone. Yes. So that means the track rod ends will come off these pits, which means that I can then do them joints. In situ, baby. Love it. Let's tighten that back up so I don't forget. That's good. Proud moment. I've just pushed the BX and there's not one single leak <laughs> from the suspension. Oh my God. I should just drive it, but I just don't like starting it for 30 seconds and putting it back. I just feel like it doesn't do the car any good. Um, so that's great. So I can call that bodge at the back fix. So I've tied it up nicely. But I filter. I want a ram air one because I'm going to ram air convert the top of the car. This is far too big. Yeah, that's never going to close up, is it? Who was I kidding? Who was I kidding thinking that that would work? Not good. 
bollocks. Fuck that one up. Um, yeah, fuck that up. These are only six quid. And Ram Air do a 19 ID. Or a <clears throat> 26. This is 21. I was like, mm, 19 won't work. Friggin' hell. That's shit, innit? That is shit. Oh, no. Yeah, that's not good. Maybe I'll buy the, the, the biggest of the smallest, 19 or whatever, and see if I can put it in hot water and get it on. Bollocks. Pretty cool, though. Um, yeah, the reason I wanted a foam one like this is because I'm going to be converting the base plate for that, so... I'm trying to keep it in theory. K and N do one's a perfect size, but... Yeah, it's just not the right the vibe I'm going for, if that makes sense. All right, that's all right though. Living like it's only six quid. We do, we do a lot of these things here. Right, so bolt here, bolt here, windy, windy, get these off. And then, yeah, see where we get to today. I'm gonna to spend half an hour. I'm gonna come in tomorrow and do it. He says, I'm gonna come in tomorrow. Me working a Saturday. That is unheard of. I do not work Saturdays. I hate working Saturdays. But if you didn't know that I already took these off yesterday, well, got them going, and I think they were 15. So this should now be as simple as, you know, you've got to plan ahead for these situations. What? 16? Shove that on. We're working on a Volkswagen now, 16. Fail to prepare, prepare to, f to fail, yeah? Jeepers creepers, how do some people do this for a living with one hand? Baz, Baz Murdith, how the fuck are you doing this with one hand every day? I love Baz, Baz is a legend, good pal, good pal of mine. But yeah, how the hell is he doing this with one hand every day? Vlogging garage life. <sighs> I wouldn't do this normally to my poor ramp, but I've got no choice in the matter. 19 mil they were, so let's get this. Halford's kit is just the creme de la creme of just having shit in your workshop, which is super easy. How did I get this yesterday? I went from about this angle and just went crack. And then I went to this side and I went, Crow's foot, didn't I? But let's see, because I've already... So if I'm going lefty-loosey, I went the wrong way. Who else still does that? Mechanics still going lefty-loosey, righty-tighty. Oh, God damn it. I'll do the other side, just for demonstration purposes. Let's get... Ooh, this one looks good. I'm not going to go mad. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 20.5 a good job we didn't get to the next number because i don't know what it is can't count higher than that Twenty point five, and then we're oh, someone's been here before and made my life very good them inner joints still nice and stiff which means that they're still Okay, which is great news. And that is how you take a track rod end off a Citroen BX on the offside front. Piece of piss. Track rod ends are a piece of piss. 
It, the reason why I've put the number there, 20.5, is because I can put it back to exactly how it was-ish, give or take a little bit, and hopefully the tracking won't be too bad, because I'm not, not, not a major fan of tracking in this workshop. I've got the string kit, got the string kit on the wall and stuff, so I can do motorsport alignments, but I don't care what anyone says, I don't like it. Kill me now. Joey Speed Shop, if you're watching. Suspension secrets, all them big players. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan. I'd much rather just... Am I tightening? I'm tightening it. I'd much rather just put it on a hunter or get an old school laser machine and just do it that way. String is the most accurate, yeah, but there's most room for human error also. Oh, God. Come with me as we do track rod ends together. Oh, that was good. You saw it move, I saw it move. In garage vlog episode gazillion, like Danny DC2, Anna. Let's get it in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Oh no, was that eighteen or was that eighteen point five? That was eighteen point five. Holy shit. That's weird, the rack's not very center. Maybe that's just a Citroen thing. You'd expect them to be more similar. 18.5. But we're, we're back. All right, I'm gonna go fit a, a door mirror to my grandma's mica in a minute. So I'm gonna get the hell out of here. But I'm prepared for tomorrow now. I've done the easy bit. Doing the easy bit is fun. Doing the hard bit sucks. The true test of leakage will be if the vehicle's overnight in the sky, if there's a puddle on the floor in the morning, but I'm pretty sure I fixed it. Let's have a look before we go home. Buzzing with that. Ready to fit them rack boots. I was watching up and down and he, he was fitting SKF ones. And he was talking about Let's turn the flash off because this is oh. about fitting SKF ones and I'd already ordered some before that I watched that video which I'm a bit upset about because I would have got SKF ones if I knew that. God damn it. Um, so I'm fitting Moog ones because I've heard of Moog before and I don't know. Are they good? I don't know. Just, just yeah, they should be. Let's hope they are. Let's hope they are because that's what's going on. Oh my God, look at how easy this one's so easy. I was just about pointing the camera at the job then and then realized that it's my big fat swell head that you're looking at. <laughs> there you go. Whee! Okay. <laughs> oh my God, we love it, don't we? It's a, oh, that's a weird clip, but I'm gonna have to beat the death out of that. And get that sucker out. <sighs> fucking hell, mate. Have you seen my face? Fucking hell. Right, back to the back here. Let's put the camera around. Oh my god, I it's on just to test the theory. Well, the theory is tested and it works. Oh, love it, love it, love it, love it. No leaks. But this is what I've just done here. So the boot is off. Very good. I'm going to. I should have really done this before, but I'm going to blow all the schmutz from here so it gives me clean working space for tomorrow. But the boots weren't doing anything anyway, so I suppose it doesn't really matter. But yeah, let's give it a clean up. This side's obviously the most difficult because you've got the ram, so the hydraulic ram, one to bolt, two bolt. I'm going to pull it out the way and just move it out the way and hopefully get work around it. I don't really want to take it fully off because I just don't really. It's not my idea of fun, that. But yeah, I'm going to give all this an airline blow now.
Build some fucking pressure. Come on. Wow. I cannot dream going back to the old house. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, cool. The up and down videos, you'll see that he said this rubber, rubber bit here is only for when you're fitting the genuine Citroen boots back in the 80s. So the rock hard ones, you, that would be what gripped to the, to the shaft, whereas I've got stretchier ones. So I don't think I need that. Um, which is something I'll need to just do a double check. I'm going to rewatch Up and Down's video and have a look. But as for now, pretty much getting there. I need to more get all that schmutz out there. There's a lot of shit in there. It's just grease in it. It's actually not that bad. It's not that bad. The car luckily hasn't moved a lot, so it's dry rotted. And it's not been used getting all shit in the rack. So that's why all outer rack joints and all that are still looking somewhat okay. That's why everything seems to be decent-ish. Because the last four years it's just sat there. Um, that's obviously not done the paint any good, but it's not not destroyed the mechanics. The, the, rubbers, the rubbers are all shit, but the metal somehow has survived. So all the metal bits are... Still okay. So the plan with this would be to smush some grease inside there, put the boot on, and well, become a cable ties. I'm not a fan of cable tying boots. I don't know if that's just me. I really don't like doing it. But it seems like everyone does it. Maybe that's just because I've been in the main deals my whole life before going self-employed. Everyone seems to cable tie these on, and I just don't like doing it. But if I've got no other choice, that is what it is. Yeah, there's no actual dirt in there. It's literally just grease, so that's good. See you tomorrow, Mr. Citroen. Bye-bye. Bye. You know what? In my life, I've never fitted a stretch boot. Um, because I've worked with dealers my whole life. I've heard that a lot of people fit these, and they have some people have success, some don't. I have a cone, one of these. What the hell is my dog doing? Lenny, what are you trying to do? What are you doing? Hey, put that down. What the hell is it? I don't know what that is. Right, Lenny, what are you doing? Okay, ignore the dog. Get out, get out of here. Get out of here, yeah. Okay, um, so we have a stretch boot. It says it's cone compatible. I have one of these. I now have a stretch boot. So the plan is to fit a stretch boot to the BX, pack the joint full of grease, which is some there. That's, this was 13 pound, I think, 10 or 13 pound. That's amazing. Pack the joint full of grease, and then I will know whether the vehicle needs a new joint slash shaft after I've driven it a little bit, because I don't know. I can't really go and take the car on a long drive, so I don't know if it's knocking or not. Um, still got to get a ball joint, but that, I don't know. That's pretty cool, it's pretty cool. We'll see how that goes. I might do that tomorrow if I can do them rack boots in decent time. I'll do this as well. Look. <laughs>
I know it's just a reoccurring theme this. I know it's only the second video, but I've got no, <laughs> I've got no leaks. I say this every day, don't I? I'm like, woohoo, no leaks. I've actually genuinely got no leaks now. Oh right. Let's send this sucker down. And turn me ramp on. Get the boots from up top and go from there. <laughs> So uh, give it a bit of a boink, boink. Ooh. Get them boots from up there. I do the offside front first because it's an absolute doddle. And then we jump to the other side. Guess who forgot his stretchy boot? So the plan was to do outer track inner rack boots and the outer CV boot on that side but I forgot my uh, boot so I can't do that today. Do you remember these bits were up and down, Mr. Up and Down Man said these bits were for the original hard boots but then all the aftermarket ones are rubber so I've took that off so then this can now sit in, don't fall on the floor, oh. so this can now sit in that little gap and then get zip tied on extremely hard. So that's the plan, slip the boot over, put a bit of, I'm going to put a bit of CV, well the grease provided, into there and a bit on the shaft and then call that done. So where is my knife? Here. Half. Oh. Okay, let's get a little bit of grease on. I wish, I'm going to get my other hand out. Oh, is it that sharp? Oh, it's so it is. Right, I can't do this one-handed. Let's see what sort of grease it is, though. Yeah, it literally looks like CV grease. Right, I'm going to put you down, put some of this on, and go for it. Okay, boot number one. Oh, look at it. Look at that. All right. Don't fit as good as an OEM, obviously. But I can still get on this spanner holder to tighten up the... To, to adjust the tracking. <clears throat> The first step is first steps first is when you're working on an old car, which is one of yours. Any car really. Um, any car that requires it. Stuff like tracking stuff, I like to just get your copper slip. I like to just paste all these. Um, because this is all gun this is all adjustable. And the last thing you want is for this to not be right. So you get that, you get your locking nut. You just, oh, just nicely, 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 nicely. And the next step is 20.5, lock it off. This side done. The other side's the issue, but this side's the easy side. I'm warming myself up nicely. Should really do the hard side first, but I am not doing that today. I disagree with that today. Because I said so. Well, very greasy, actually. Oh, better to be greasy than to be seasy. Is that, a, <laughs> is that a saying? Probably not. I'm just going to put that on the end there like that. And then when the track rod threads on. Right, so these go that way. So because it went that way, I start that way. I'm going to have to just have two hands for this guy, sorry. Right, this is my plan. Steam it. Get it nice and hot. Flip it over. It's been a bit fiddly. Whoa. Okay. So, boots are on. I can't really see them. That one's a good one to see. This near side one wasn't very fun due to that thread where the bolt goes in. But she's on and she works, so I'm happy with that. It was a bit of a shit job, but not as bad as people say. I used a steamer to heat it up. I coated the inside with grease and she went on, so I can't really complain too much. Bolted back on. Looking good. I notice this. Got a cloth. That pipe is to the drive shaft. That's terrifying. Because that'll just rub through that. Don't know where. That's the suspension pipe up there. Again, low pressure as always. My arch nemesis is low pressure pipes. Um, so I don't know what I'm going to do with that. It, used, it looks like it should just shove up there. And it does just show up there, but how good is that? That's actually okay, actually. 
yeah that's stuck in now yeah okay good so that's just been yeah it's not great but it's in now that's good weird 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 look at the boot so boot and the boot you can just about see up there so that's now going to pass well that's another mlt job done next step is to make sure all the nipples crack off so then i can bleed the brakes the front left has cracked off um this side's looking a bit more worse for wear. So we've got a nice bit of a drill. Should put you in 0.5 mode so then you can see. That side's cracked off. I'm gonna put on the list, crack off rear nipples. So she cracked off as well. So crack it off a little bit. Get the drill, go back in. Good stuff. LHM fluid's coming out, so that's enough to do the front. So you do the fronts first and you do the rears. But the rears are a bit weird. I'm gonna have to do a full video on bleeding the brakes. Well, full segment. But for now, I'm gonna to add to list crack nipples off, front nipples cracked off. So that means that they can now be bled in the future. I forgot my stretchy boot, but what I can do is I can make sure the Today, I can make sure the drive shaft actually pushes out because that could be that could be an issue. But yeah, we'll do oh. that next. This has been off before you can tell. So it's 36, he says. So we've got a 36 here. Put it in 0.5 more so you can see. Give it a zap zap. Give it the old. She's been off before. So that put that there. Hmm, what shall I use? Let's see how loose it is. Let's use a small copper hammer for now. We've got a big copper hammer, and then we've got obviously a drift and a really big friggin' sledgehammer if need be, and some heat, but. Oh my God, yes. See that? So that's come loose. So there's no need to dress about that, unfortunately because I don't have my boot, because I forgot it at home like an absolute donkey. She's going back on. But I can now say, next time I have literally one spare hour, I can get the vehicle on the lift, change that boot, which is a great, great, great success. That means all that will come off. Ball joint is getting changed, but will the lower arm come off? 100% will it come off it piece of piss it will so you can see here it's got some hammer marks already therefore that means that that's already been off and it probably already has a new ball joint on it so if that's been hammered before this arm will come off got to do is buzz that off hit that bit with a hammer break the joint put my arm puller with a bit of weight on it and just pull it down here and then leave it down there so then I hope I can change the ball joint at the same time but I'm chuffed about that. That's a stress out of the way. I, was, I don't like it when the drive shaft sees in the hub, but we can be confident to say that they're not going to seize in the hub and that we can actually finish. That's it. What, what, what's left for MLT? I can't remember. I've got a bulb out, which I'm going to try and fix today. One of the bulbs is out. I think it's the indicator bulb there. Every other bulb works. We've got CV boot, ball joint left. She's going for MLT, boys. I said I'm going, I said I wanted it done by the end of the month, but booked a last minute trip to Spain. So that might not be possible. Um, but I think it will be, we'll see. Um, right, so every single bulb works apart from this one. I've took it out. Wiring looks okay, but the bulb looks okay. But I think the first step would just be, just get a bulb for what it's worth. Just get a bulb, see if it works. Today's job next, because I don't have my CV boot with me is to try and figure out why the front washers aren't working. 
or they work well they don't work the pump makes a noise but apart from that she doesn't do much so there's a pipe which should be it should go into that pump there it shouldn't go up to there i've linked it and that was completely wrong so ignore that track link please um which should be plumbed in but i don't know where it should go this is a bit of a concern there's a wiper up there hmm not good because obviously it goes obviously it goes to there but how the fridge does it get there couldn't tell you let's have a quick butchers with off, off camera wow there's so many leaves i haven't cleaned up under here we're in a mission to try and fix the washers i have found many leaves many leaves so i'm going to clean all this up back it all blow it all back it all blow it all get the brush out give it all clean give these trims a clean so then they go back and they look as good as they possibly can do we'll go from there but for now we've got mr henry so mr henry's gonna help clean up this Oh no, he's done a backflip. Shit. That's not, sorry Henry. How did he do it on purpose? Maybe he likes it. It's not my Henry. She's very, oh, we're gonna need two hands. Someone's put this back like an absolute no. So if you have a look here now, all the leaves are gone. Much better. That looks approximately 10 times better. Everything's all clean-ish, not perfect, but it is what it is. Look what I love these little bits here. Uh, look at that. A chaque remplissage, citron vous recommandez l'utilisation des additifs dissous par son reçu votre note. So your notice, Citroen recommends using additives in your washer fluid, basically. It's as simple as that is. My French is mediocre at best, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, but we can't use additives. Pascua, we do not have a pipe from there to there, which I'm still struggling with. Still struggling to figure out where the bloody hell that pipe goes, which isn't good. I thought it'd be easy to figure out, but turns out it isn't. I thought it was that, but is it? It can't be. It can't be. That's just a thread. Is there, is there anything there? Where my finger is there? I can't see. I'm going to flip it upside down and see if I can see. What the hell is that? Is that it? Can I see? I'm watching. I'm watching. Oh, yeah, that's it. That's it. Right, okay, cool. That's it. Yes. Look. Pipe in, pipe there. You ready? Yes. Yes! I'm so happy with that. I'm so happy with that. Yes, so, so happy with that. That works. Nothing's rubbing. It's just tucked nicely. It's got a lot of slack, so it should be flexible. It's fabric, so it won't rub through anything. Buzzing. Buzzing. I'm so happy about that. Have we fixed it? Think we have? We saw that before, let's just hold this pipe on the wall. Whoa! Where's it coming from? Whoa! Is that okay? Is that what the wipe should be? Mm. Parking a bit wrong with the edge. Is that 
right? I think it must be, but with a couple of splines or something to sit a bit like that. So it goes through the centre of the wiper there, can you see it? Watch this now. Whoa! So it kind of works. Yeah, yeah, it works now, so that's kind of good. Let's see. that last one that's over here. Yeah, it's just... Oof. Is that where it's supposed to stop in the middle? No, someone's modified it. It's cool as fuck in here! Yeah. <laughs> like a race car. How did you really stop in the middle? I don't know. I don't know how he's done it. It wasn't me. Very smart, is that? Is that what we Cool, she's fixed, that's another one. CB boot ball joint, she's going. She's MLT. Done. So, I've took this off. I've got this here now, just expose, give it all good detail, brush and clean. Scuttle looks somewhat clean. Washers work. I don't think you understand how happy that makes me. Just little things like that make life a lot easier. So last thing now, this is next week's job. So next week I'm hoping to take it for an MLT so we'll have indicator bulb, CV boot, ball joint. The ball joint tool's coming hopefully soon. Once all that's there, uh, I'm going to drive it to the MLT station and we'll get it MLT and see if it passes or not. Like I said, I could. I, I, I don't want a dodgy MLT. I want the MLT to be as legit as possible. I want this car to be completely road legal properly. <laughs> 